Like the name suggests, malolactic fermentation is the conversion of malic acid into lactic acid. But unlike primary fermentation, which yeast initiates that process, malolactic fermentation is a bacteria fermentation. So almost all red wines go through malolactic fermentation, and some white wines do. Winemakers have a lot to think about when they choose to or not to go through malolactic fermentation, especially with white wines. And there's kind of four components, I think, of that. One is style like what stylistic parameters they want to work within. Uh, the second would be chemistry, you know, pH and TA and those sort of things. And then there's flavor and, ar and aromatic profile, and there's also stability. Malic acid tends to be a tartar, greener type of city, so I think of like green apple, like a Granny Smith apple is a malic acid kind of taste. Uh, lactic acid is a, is a softer, rounder acid. It actually is sour, but you can think of lactic acid as in like kefir or a fermented dairy product. So there's several things that go on during malolactic fermentation. One, the process creates CO2 in the wine, which also gives you some protection because you won't have any SO2 in the wine during that process. Also, you're going to reduce your total acidity in the wine. You will increase your pH. You will also create a byproduct called diacetyl, and in white wines, that diacetyl sort of come across as buttered popcorn. One other way to go through full mallow and not have as much diacetyl characteristics in the wine is to stay on the lees for as long as possible. The yeast that are left viable in the lees will actually consume that byproduct. To encourage a white wine to go through malolactic fermentation, you want to first understand that the conditions that would prevent it. One would be high alcohol. It's really hard for a wine to go through malolactic fermentation if the alcohol is above, say, 14.5 to 15. The second would be pH. You would want to go through malolactic fermentation if you had a lot of acidity, but a lot of acidity correlates to low pH. Sometimes it's difficult to get a wine to go through malolactic fermentation just because the pH is so low. So below about 3.2, that's another inhibiting factor to encourage malolactic fermentation. The third key piece is temperature. Below about 55 degrees Fahrenheit, it's sort of inhibiting to malolactic fermentation as well. So if you didn't want to go through malolactic fermentation, there's a lot of ways you can block it. So one is right after primary fermentation, you can hit it with SO2. SO2 is a major inhibitor of malolactic fermentation because it knocks back the bacteria and you can lower the temperature. So again, anything below 55 degrees Fahrenheit. And really, if you want to inhibit it, I would go below 50, keep the wine around 48 or so. So the risk of going to bottle unfiltered if you still have malic acid remaining in the wine is basically fermenting in bottle. Because of ferment in bottle, you produce a lot of CO2, there'll be effervescence in the wine. It is risky and you definitely can have re-fermentation issues which aren't good in bottle, especially if you're a consumer and you didn't really understand what was going on and you didn't expect your Chardonnay to be sparkling or your Pinot Noir to be sparkling. But it can be done if you know the right kind of conditions.